Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In this video, we will be discussing about capnography waveform. In previous video, we have already discussed about capnography and ETCO2 monitoring. If you haven't watched it, please follow the link given in the description below. If you haven't subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the session. Now, here is the normal capnography waveform. The x-axis or height shows the amount of CO2 in mmHg. The y-axis or length depicts the time. AB denotes the baseline where B is the start of alveolar exhalation. BC denotes expiratory upstroke. CD denotes expiratory plateau and D denotes ETCO2 value. DE denotes where the inspiration begins. Let's discuss the same thing face by face in detail. This is the normal capnography waveform. Phase 1 starts from A to B, otherwise called dead space ventilation. Why? Because there is no gas exchange in the upper airway, which is often called the dead space. In phase 1, there is ending of inhalation and beginning of exhalation. And carbon dioxide is not present during inspiration. And hence, the baseline is zero. Next comes phase 2, which is from B to C and is called the ascending phase. In phase 2, Carbon dioxide from the alveoli reaches the upper airway and mix with the dead space air. This causes rise in the amount of carbon dioxide and is detected in exhaled air. Next comes phase 3 which is from C to D otherwise called alveolar plateau. In phase 3, the carbon dioxide from the alveoli has reached the airway exit. The exhaled air is now rich in carbon dioxide and hence the concentration of carbon dioxide in the air is uniform. The alveolar plateau is flat with a slight upward tilt towards the end. This plateau illustrates the uniform concentration of carbon dioxide in the pulmonary system. One more thing in phase 3 is D which is the end of phase 3 and it indicates end tidal CO2. The end of phase 3 is also called the end of exhalation. Termination of the breath cycle contains the highest concentration of carbon dioxide and is called the end tidal CO2. Next comes phase 4 which is the descending phase from D to E. When inspiration thus begins again, the amount of measured carbon dioxide quickly drops to zero. The rapid descent to baseline is shown here between D and E. The return to baseline is called phase 4. This phase shows the beginning of the next inhalation because oxygen fills the airway and the carbon dioxide level quickly drops to the baseline. Next comes the end tidal carbon dioxide waveform assessment. When you look into the monitor, the following components are very important to assess if the waveform is normal or abnormal. Waveform, baseline, expiratory upstroke, alveolar plateau, inspiratory downstroke. Here comes the ABCs of waveform interpretation. First comes airway. Here you can check for signs of obstructed airway which is indicated by steep upsloping expiratory plateau. Next comes breathing. Check the ETCO2 reading and waveform and here you can see an elevated respiratory baseline. Next comes circulation. Here you can check the trends of ETCO2 waveforms for 15 to 30 minutes or longer and identify if they are increasing or decreasing. Here comes certain clinically important abnormal capnography waveforms for your knowledge. 
This is the normal capnography waveform where all the phases are within the normal limits. And if we look at the ETCO2 value, it is 42 mmHe, which is also within the normal range that is between 35 to 45 mmHe. Next comes the waveform which denotes hyperventilation. In this type of capnography waveform, the ETCO2 reading is initially within the normal range. As the respiratory rate goes higher, the ETCO2 reading drops down and the waveform goes narrower. The causes for hyperventilation are increase in respiratory rate and tidal volume, metabolic acidosis, fall in body temperature, pulmonary embolism, hyperventilation syndrome, etc. This image shows the short-term trend of hyperventilation waveform. When you have a look at the long-term trend of the waveform, it gets more narrower than this. Next comes hypoventilation waveform. In this waveform, the ETCO2 value will be gradually increasing because the respiratory rate starts to decrease. The reasons are decrease in respiratory rate and tidal volume, metabolic rate increases, rise in body temperature, narcotic overdose, heavy sedation, CNS dysfunction, etc. Next comes the waveform with loss of alveolar plateau. In this type of waveform, there is no phase 3, that is, there is no alveolar plateau which indicates incomplete or obstructed exhalation. The waveform is specifically termed shark's fin pattern waveform. The causes include kinked or occluded artificial airway, foreign body in the airway, obstruction in expiratory limb, and conditions like asthma, COPD, etc. Next comes waveform with elevated baseline. If we look at the waveform, there is elevation in the baseline, which indicates incomplete inhalation or exhalation. Carbon dioxide does not get completely washed out on inhalation. The possible causes are faulty expiratory valve, inadequate inspiratory flow, partial rebreathing, insufficient expiratory time and rebreathing carbon dioxide due to fault in the ventilator circuit etc. Next comes the sudden loss of waveform. There is complete loss of waveform which indicates no carbon dioxide present. This may be due to apnea, airway obstruction, dislodged airway, airway disconnection, ventilator malfunction, cardiac arrest, etc. Next comes cardiac arrest or poor perfusion waveform. This image shows a 30-minute trend of capnography waveform, which indicates perfusion during CPR and effectiveness of resuscitation efforts. If you notice this image, there is a trough formed in the center of the capnogram. This trough is formed when the first rescuer takes the hands off during CPR and the second rescuer takes the turn for the compressions. After the second rescuer takes the turn for the compression, we can notice the elevation in the waveforms. Next comes the return of spontaneous circulation waveform. If you notice this image, there is a dramatic change in the ETCO2 after the patient has been defibrillated. Hence, using continuous waveform capnography can make a life-saving difference during cardiac resuscitation. Why? Because it indicates the quality of chest compression and it detects the return of spontaneous circulation without interrupting resuscitation. So, these are the important clinical waveforms a nurse needs to know. Another important thing a nurse needs to know when CO2 is not detected, three factors must be quickly evaluated for possible causes. 
loss of airway function, loss of circulatory function, and equipment malfunctions. Loss of airway function may be due to airway obstruction, apnea. Loss of circulatory function may be due to massive pulmonary embolism, cardiac arrest. Equipment malfunction may be due to improper mask seal or tube placement. So, this is all about the different waveforms and if you have not watched the introduction on capnography, you can find the link in the description below. If you find this video useful, please like it and please subscribe it and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.